you very much, Derek. I'll smoke a cigarette, I'm sure. No, that was my phone that was ringing. That was your phone ringing? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a great set. Our first time here at the local. Please give the local a round of applause. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to, like to remind everybody we, we are accepting a suggested donation of $5 that goes to paying our poets. So please don't forget to me, either me or Skylar. We've got to take the money off hands. <laughs> uh, let's see, our, oh, if any of you do social media things, feel free oh to God. take pictures and uh, hashtag writing nights. Yes? Sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, social media, hashtag writing nights, we're on Twitter. Oh, you can at writing nights too on Twitter or uh, Instagram as well. Our next performer is a Parma poet, playwright, Crisis Chronicles publisher, cross country performer. See how I did that? I did that. He performed his poetry. Please welcome John Burroughs. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hello. I love this place and I love all of y'all. It's so good to see you here. And thank you, Derek. Enjoyed Thank your you. very much. I'm very much looking forward to Alicia, one of my favorites, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here. Without further ado, Bloodshot. Indian summer sun squints. Bloodshot like the wide, wounded eyes of my cynical Seneca ancestors. On and on and on on, an endless queue of unrelenting conquistadors lusting for booty or bust, defile our trust and defame the name of God in the name of God. Opportunity does not knock for trusting tribesmen, be they from Arizona, the Amazon, Africa, or Akron. Writing roughshod over every allegedly endless empire, including America, the beautifully dutiful, the cursed curse of history, leads a parade of pathetic and unsympathetic plotters, plodders, priests and presidents, electable eels who feel their forked tongues and dung make them agents of distinction instead of extinction. Sweetly sighing lullabies of liberty and expediency, these leaders open their bomb bays as they pray, first for the unconditional surrender of our enemies, and last, if at all, for the bloodshot souls of the soon to be charred children of Hiroshima, Hanoi, Belfast, Belgrade, Baghdad, Bethlehem, New York City, and coming soon to a theater of war near you. Dishwork, recalling Columbia Hills Country Club, 1986. Jerry was a waitress, served me a stiff drink called a screaming orgasm. Vodka, Irish cream, amaretto, and coffee liqueur. While soaked in steam from the dishwashing machine, I scrubbed dried hollandaise sauce from some would-be PGA star's lunch plate and waited for our lunch break in the basement storeroom where we'd covertly wash down the day's eggs benedict with another. But this time, no screaming. <laughs> <laughs>
This poem was inspired by a photograph by Herbert Asherman, a great Cleveland photographer, and it was a portrait of an astrologer in front of uh, a, a sculpture of the zodiac. And the title is Sybil, which of course is a, an ancient soothsayer, but if you don't believe in horoscopes or soothsayers, you could pronounce the title Sea Bull. But anyway, Sybil. Ares is my brother, building an illegal bonfire in his suburban backyard. Taurus is my mother, the origin of my poesy, bequeathing me her incongruous bull horns. Gemini is a roller coaster, mirror hook, and grommet, full sore and plummet. Cancer nips at my back. Leo is a mainly masseuse, loosing regal courage, where and when I least expect. Virgo is an exacting secret. Libra scales a mountain of excrement, finding balance at its summit. Scorpio is my adoptive father, stinging the air, my bottom now out of reach. Sagittarius prances deftly over my head, a thought balloon keeping would-be backstabbers at bay, while Capricorn philosophizes disaster away. Aquarius yearns to be a fortunate oasis. Pisces fishes for homeostasis, and they all revolve around me, the astrologer, brilliant in my white dress, gleaning relationship and illumination from the universal night. <laughs> um, my latest chapbook was uh, published by the Poets Haven right here in this area, Maslin, and uh, I'm really proud of it, Waterworks. And they're all poems about various forms of liquid, beer, wine, Lakes, rivers, bodily fluids, <laughs> and uh, I'll spare you the bodily fluids poems, but uh, no, don't. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, this is kind of a semi. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what this is, but <laughs> love shot. I want to push into you my fear of pushing into you but not infect you with the fear of being pushed too hard. I want to plunge all my poetry into the toilet of us till we rise, flush and brimming with words unspoken to tear pages from the book of our fecal pasts and burn them for warmth. I want to marry you without burying you, kiss you without our lips ever having to part and leave the resulting mess for someone else. I want to stoke your silver engine, stream past you like a highway, wash over you like a river, take back everything I didn't give you, just to store it up for the rainy days after I retire from commitment and you move on to Tom, Dick, or someone scarier. <laughs> I want to die and be reborn as a rock, a star, geologist, astronomer. I want to orbit you like a moon, but not always show you my best side. I want to blaze like a comet, break free from my circuit, plunge into you, burn out in your atmosphere. I want to fire my arrow into you and quiver. The last time I read for Writing Nights nice was, was last year at Buzzbin, the day one of my uh, artistic heroes, Prince, passed away. And in the meantime, I wrote this poem um, 
I stole a few lines from him. Those are the ones that will be sung. From Genesis to Exodus, after Prince Rogers Nelson. In the beginning, there was God, and God was much more than a B-side to Purple Rain. Much more than the single before I would die for you. God was the one I called faggot in high school several years before I knew better and became a true believer and bisexual. God was ubiquitous on MTV the summer I entered the Marine Corps at 17 and exited the Marine Corps still 17 dazed. You're gonna have to fight your own damn war. God was there, purple on screen during my first blowjob at the Tower Drive-In. And he was always there on the clock radio in Wilkes Villa, seen and known, unseen and unknowable, in my homeless backpack in Cascade Park, plugged into the table cassette player at the Lorraine County Community College Library, and in the background as I went down for the first time on Cassie's Raspberry Hooray. God was still there, a prince of a man, as I made it through college, cut off my wannabe jerry curl, took a job at the gay bar, lost and found my identities again and again, and even when through enforced sobriety and concrete cell walls, I watched 1999 come and go and raved unto the joy monastic. Joan Osborne asked, what if God was one of us? And he was. And he walked among us. And often we knew him not, especially when he became Jehovah's Witness and exorcised his songs from YouTube and bought into chemtrail conspiracy theories, Percocet pantomimes, and a fentanyl flatline. Because living can be painful even when you're God, especially when you're God. And in the 21st century, God was still here with us, even as TMZ declared him dead. And though I live on Alphabet Street, no psalm of mine can capture his new power glory. is not quite about bodily fluids, but it does involve water. <laughs> it's a short one entitled, Can, Can Do. <laughs> on the crapper, writing shit, ass agape on a page not quite as white as the toilet bowl, I tear off the stinking ink-soiled sheet, crumple and drop it into the wastewater basket, flush and retreat. Goodbye, cruel word. Mm. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, thank you so much. You're beautiful, beautiful people. And thank you. My last poem is entitled Lens. and silence is most golden to the rich and oppressive, and would be impressive if not for the give gone missing from nature's desired balance. Give and take, and give and take, and take, and 
the record keeps skipping. Time to pull out the needle. Violence! Silence. Violence. Silence! Stuck in the same groove. Sometimes I feel like an acquisition infected by a control bot, running as my masters intend whenever anyone sticks coins into my slot. Like I'm programmed to consume and consume, subsume, take a nap, and resume, consume, subsume, because size matters. Bigger is better, stronger, faster, forget impending disaster. I want to be the $60 million man when I grow down. Can't wake up? Need to drink more coffee. Can't go to sleep? Need to drink more wine. Always hungry. Need more mine all the time in between. Never satisfied. I dine and dine. I'm more and more swine. Prove the proverb true. I am what I eat. Maybe sometimes you are too. Violence, silence, violence, silence, distinction blurs. So kill them all and let God sort them out. We human would-be gods can't wait to start sorting the money and land and command you dead leave behind. But first, we need your ass. <coughs> Assistance. Be all that you can be. Join. Consume. Follow. Consume. Collect. Consume. Kill. Consume. Die. Consumed. Submission accomplished. Violence. Contract the compound, distill the essence. Sigh, violence. Vi, silence. Contract it further. Vice, vice. You can spell it either way with an S or a C. Violence, silence. Vice, vice, baby. The record keeps skipping. The handle keeps turning. The head I've been trying to squeeze is my own and my children's. Time to pull out the needle. Stop churning the handle. Look in a mirror for a moment. Put my vying and my sighing aside and focus my lens.